Hey guys, how you doing? It's Luke uh, Willette, also known as Rick Wilson Online, and wanted to bring you guys through my build. Now that after oh, 18 months almost, uh, of many different iterations, I consider it complete, uh, which is saying a lot for me, for folks who know me from my uh, constant changes and swapping out equipment and trying new things and locations, but I think we have finally found the recipe uh, short of a Brax DSP. Uh, so, uh, I'll give you guys a complete overview of the truck here. Uh, I'm going to start uh, at my amp rack and work through my substage and then bring you guys up to the front stage. Uh, right now my back uh, seat is out. Uh, I will replace it halfway through the video so you can see what the uh, rear fill looks like. But anyways, let's, uh, let's bring you through. A uh, little preface, this thing is my first real build. Uh, I used to have a uh, SUV in high school that I had done a basic kicker build and head unit and not, nothing to, to what the level of this is but um, this has been a really great learning experience met a lot of great people and fell down the rabbit hole uh, very aggressively but uh, I've really enjoyed it uh, the vehicle is a 2021 uh, GMC Sierra ET4 uh, it was non Bose uh, which was actually a blessing for me in terms of fitment and equipment um, the truck is basically stock from a mechanical standpoint, has a cold air intake and a programmer, but uh, and has some aesthetic pieces, uh, wheels, and um, we'll try to get as much of the chrome uh, away from the vehicle as possible. But besides that, is more just a, trying to keep it stealth and clean, which is uh, most of the theme of the install as well. Uh, but it's a, it's a functional vehicle. Right now it has studded tires on it, so it's very loud, but uh, here in Maine it's late March, so we're finally transitioning uh, over to uh, our summer months so I can get uh, my much much quieter tires done. Um, so, uh, actually I'll run through the sound treatment first because it's even though it's invisible, I'll try to add a few selective photos here. Uh, but one of the unique things that I have done here is uh, the front wheel wells um, are completely lined with a fiber mat uh, 45, both of the front wheel wells. I did not bother with, with the rears because the bed is disconnected. Uh, so it's not really gonna provide any benefit, but um, I also have CLD on the back side of the firewall uh, as well as on the inside of the vehicle, but I actually made a surprising difference. I'm really anxious to get my summer tires. I actually haven't heard the difference since I put my uh, summers on, or took my summers off. I did this uh, about a few months ago while I still had winter tires, uh, but a surprising difference. Uh, the doors, uh, the outer skins are fully treated with Resinix CLV as well as um, black hole tiles. Uh, and the front doors, the rear doors do not have black hole tiles. There is a uh, full set of block off plates uh, on the front doors as well. Uh, there's Sound Skins Pro on the inner skin, uh, which probably my only decision that I regret, but not going to make a tremendous difference. Uh, and then on the door cards themselves, I have uh, a fiber mat 45 between the plastic door card and the inner door card. And uh, the door cards are completely covered in Resinex CLD as well. Uh, they are heavy for sure, uh, but it's made a tremendous difference. And especially since I run eights inside my doors, um, I could go IB kicks, but this is a company vehicle, so I'm trying not to chop it up too much. So, uh, other sound treatment, uh, the headliner is completely done um, with fiber mat and CLD as well. Uh, that made a very big difference. Uh, I recommend anybody who's got a truck or uh, a non-treated uh, headliner, it makes a massive difference in the, um, especially the air and road noise as you're driving, uh, and then also helps out with your subs a lot. Uh, the floor is partially treated with CLD as well. And the back wall of the truck is fully treated in CLD and CCF. Okay. All right, let's get into the truck. So, um, back of the vehicle. Uh, this is where there is a lot going on. Um, I have three amps and a DSP uh, back here with 11 channels of total power. Uh, so what I have, let me flip a light on here so you guys can see a bit better, is a uh, pair of 530s uh, Moscone Pros that... Uh, they are split to run one sub each, which I have some GB12s down here. I'll show you in a second. Uh, so I have a sub on each of them. And 
Uh, my This 530 runs my mid bass and rears. Uh, the mid bass are on the high power channels, uh, roughly 200 uh, at four ohms each. And the rears get about a, about 100, uh, which are up here now, which is my rear fill, which are the Steg MS30s. Uh, the other uh, 530 over there, uh, that runs um, well, I can show you guys a little closer here because I have termination strips. Uh, so that's showing you that, again, my, my mid base and my rears run off of this. Uh, and then this right here, uh, this 530 run by tweeters and my mids. Uh, the mids are on the high power channels and the tweeters are on the low power channels. Uh, they could be on either. The mid mids that I run are very sensitive. Uh, they really don't need that power, but... Uh, they run on direct DSP mode. Actually, my entire system runs on direct DSP mode, um, with the exception of the subs. The subs, actually, that's too much gain for them, so I have them on minimum gain, uh, which uh, just goes to show uh, the, how sensitive the GBs are. Uh, DSP, um, this is the Helix uh, DSP Pro uh, MK3. So. Uh, kind of the current generation, uh, I call it a 10 channel ultra, uh, has dual DAX, uh, it's a powerhouse, works really very, works awesome. Uh, virtual channels, I think I'm a Helix convert, I'll, I don't think I'll ever have a, a non-Helix or, uh, or Brax DSP until something really blows me away. The functionality is just too good. Um, and the the software alone, uh, let alone the reliability of the hardware, the software alone is enough to sell me. Um, and then the last amp here, uh, sorry, it's a little dirty, is my uh, Helix M1X, which uh, runs my recently added front sub, uh, the Illusion C10. Um, so that's got a 10 gauge running up to the front. Um, tried to loom anything and everything that I could uh, just to protect things and keep them clean. From a signal you'll see up front uh, here, is my RSD uh, coax cable, which goes to three and a half uh, SPDIF up front. I also have an optical source, which is a topping D10S, which is what I use for my phone. Uh, I rarely use this as a source. Uh, then in the back, I also have high level inputs. And then this termination strip that you see here is actually uh, my remote out distribution. Uh, so I have remote out from uh, the Helix, the Helix provides plenty of, uh, of, of signal to, to power, probably 15 or 20 amps if you wanted, but use a nice termination strip. It allows me to, uh, instead of daisy chaining um, my remote outs, I can just run dedicated wires to each of them. Uh, so that powers, uh, there's one that comes in, this termination strip bridges them all, and then goes to the three amps out. Um, no signal pop, no, no, no nothing, turns on perfectly. Um, the My ground block is here, uh, the amps, are four gauge, four gauge for the 530s and eight gauge to uh, the M1X, just because the M1X is, uh, is running probably 400 uh, watts at most. So not, especially with the, the length of my cable run, uh, there's not too much there. Uh, so if I move over, crawling in here a little bit, uh, I have uh, my main distribution, which comes from a zero gauge up front. And uh, again, uh, everything is fused per Emma. Uh, standards right now and then I have an inline fuse here that runs my DSP uh, 530 530 and then my M1X uh, for RCAs I use the Resonix solderless system uh, works awesome allows you to do custom links especially since I'm trying to fit so much in a little area uh, it is a big help to have something that works really efficiently uh, and uh, a couple unique clearance things because it is so tight back here is I made myself a uh, kind of custom uh, offset bracket here for my seatbelt. Uh, so that way uh, when the seatbelt runs by, uh, so if I can get it to focus here, uh, that it never does actually touch the amps and uh, keeps everything kind of clean and protected. Um, other pieces back here, um, my rear fill. Uh, this I did about a month ago. Uh, some brackets that I put here because uh, as opposed to running rear fill down in these rear doors which are just buried uh, I had I still have actually in there some audio frog GS62 coaxles um, they do okay they just get buried so from a response standpoint in the driver's seat they just they're not very healthy um, but uh, putting them up here um, 
has made a huge difference. Um, I basically get as much response as I want out of them. They are across 300 to 6K uh, right now uh, in rear differential. Um, make a really nice difference in the staging. Um, I also, you're seeing some brackets here. Uh, that is a result of a seat lift, uh, which lifts my entire kind of rear assembly here uh, by two inches because I wanted to run some full size subs. Uh, I think that just about covers uh, the amplification and uh, stage of the of the truck. But if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments. So uh, for subs, uh, back here, MTI uh, stage two box uh, fits well. But again, I run a two inch seat lift here. You can see the bracket right there. And uh, LMI out of, I believe it's either Tennessee or Kentucky makes them. A uh, really simple kit. I kind of created an instruction manual on my DEMA thread, but uh, works really well. Um, GB12s, awesome. Um, kind of tough to beat for the price. Uh, they are in about 1.3 CF, 1.25 uh, each. Um, again, there's another on, on this side here. So you got two full, uh, two subs here and equal chambers. Um, they are in their own chambers. They're not in a common chamber uh, just because I'm running them off two amps. That allows if I wanted to tune them separately, even though they do run off of uh, one channel out of my DSP. So they, they act as one from a, a time and, and um, EQ standpoint. Um, so that's that. I'm going to kind of a little, a little AT4 logo. Uh, I wanted to keep it uh, simple and clean and and kind of stealth didn't want it to be too loud or because uh, the build is i want it to stand out a little bit but not too much uh, so that is the rear and i'm going to cut here for just a second and put the rear seat in so you can get a nice uh, impression of what the, the back looks like when it's all put together real quick i wanted to go show you guys my seat back because uh, this is the oem foam it's been trimmed um, basically I only have the two ends just to help seal. Uh, I had to remove the OEM just to get clearances. I actually have this as access here, uh, through the front so I can get access to my fuses, uh, because there is, uh, some cubbies in these that allow me to just open the door and then access fuses. Uh, again, sound treated with Resonix, uh, products, CLD and the CCF. All right. So back seats back in, uh, takes literally about a minute or two to get it in and out. Um, I don't keep my headrest in. I'll probably put them in here eventually uh, now that I consider the build pretty much done. Uh, but again, rear fills back there. It's clean. I'm going to make some new grills that uh, hide the cones uh, in the next couple of weeks. But uh, anyways, uh, so up front, uh, I'm going to walk over to the other side here. Uh, and you guys are getting kind of a preview of what's up front. But uh, I'll go show you the front sub that we uh, or I just wrapped up this past weekend. That has made a big, big difference. Uh, so from an install standpoint, uh, it is subtle, stealth, which is exactly what I wanted, um, protected. Um, you're seeing just a uh, finished trim panel. Uh, and I will include as many photos as I can here, but uh, one thing that I did maintain is a vent here uh, because my HVAC for uh, cooling and heat uh, does come through here. Uh, for the uh, uh, footwell portion. Uh, so I wanted to maintain access. It's also a nice area to be able to remove this easily. So um, if I pop this trim panel out here, oh, this thing is filthy, sorry. All right, a little cleaner now. Anyways, uh, here is my uh, Illusion C10 front sub. Uh, this thing is amazing. Um, I'm going to clean that up a little bit here. So, um, what you guys are seeing here is a fiberglass with a plywood baffle. Uh, I have about, oh, 0.6, almost 0.7 uh, cubic feet in this enclosure. This thing plays down to 32 and it plays up to about 150. Uh, it, it does anything and everything that I was hoping it, for it to do. 
uh, really has cleaned up mid base, especially since I run door mid base. Uh, it helps support some of those cancellations. Um, up front base uh, is t is tougher with trucks because uh, the dr the rears are so close to you. Uh, it's hard to, um, especially in that like peaky forty to sixty. Uh, it's hard for that. Uh, for your ears to not travel backwards. Uh, the front sub definitely helps a lot with that. Um, honestly, I could run this truck with just this front sub, and from an SQ standpoint, I'd be missing maybe sub uh, 25 hertz, but besides that, this thing would be more than an, uh, capable of running a nice system. Um, it's vinyl wrapped, uh, and the same vinyl you'll see in the other front stage. Apologize, this is a work truck, so it's a little beat up. I got some trim panels to clean up, but uh, very, uh, very happy with how this turned out. It was a sprint of a project, but uh, it works extremely well and does exactly what I want it to. Uh, trim panel is carpeted, has a little uh, protection uh, for the dust cap, um, but that allows it to breathe through fully and doesn't really affect the performance at all. So let me get this back in here. And there it is. Uh, so matches the factory carpet actually really well uh, in there. It's got a little bit darker, but honestly, the, I keep this uh, all-weather mat in here um, pretty much all the time. The doors are a Focal uh, Utopia EWM. Um, they beat the crap out of my doors, but they pretty much hold together. Again, those are crossed from uh, 250 or 240 uh, down to about 100. Front sub runs 55, I think, yeah, roughly 55 to 100 right now. And then uh, rear subs take over from there. So let me walk back over to the driver's seat and I'll give you guys a tour of the nicest part of the front stage in my opinion. Alrighty. So before we get up to the drivers, um, my signal and source is done here via here, which is a uh, FIO. Uh, M11 plus DAP, and um, I typically use Apple Music. Um, it's on a magnetic mount here, so it can come off. Um, probably will clean this up eventually, but uh, it runs just a couple of clean wires here uh, that again run my uh, SPDIF three and a half. Get this to focus, and then just power that runs from my center console. Uh, one thing that's nice with the FIO is the car mode that allows you, uh, that the unit will turn off immediately uh, once you uh, power down the vehicle so you don't have to worry about it uh, keeping your system on. In the center, um, this is a uh, DIY custom conductor mount uh, for the Helix. Um, again, this will uh, run master volume. This focus here. That runs my subs. That's rear fill. That allows me to toggle digital sources. And then finally presets. Um, so it works well. Uh, it's actually very easily to remove. Um, and then just quite literally drops in there and press fits back in. Um, it's actually more comfortable to drive with this here because it's very natural for where I keep my arm. Uh, to run the system. All right, um, so um, you're catching it up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, these are the beauties of the Akiton Automotives. Uh, the tweeter is the C30AM, and the mid is the C100. Um, they just do things that other speakers can't, and you have to be prepared to, to listen to them because they reveal everything. Um, but once they're, they're tuned in, they are just incredible. They, they run right now. Uh, my mids are 240, actually all the way up to 5K. Tweeters are across that uh, 5K up. Um, and just do some magical things. Um, I worked with Vanguard Automotive Design. They did the pillars and the mid pods. Uh, I've run everything from Utopia, Late Carbon Pro, uh, Blam Baltics, uh, GB Audio Frog, and the GS. Um, so I've had 
by Phil uh, with, with trying some things, but they really did a beautiful job with these. Um, I, I have no intention of ever moving on from them. Um, the, the pillars are, are just a statement piece and, and, the, and the mid is performs so well in this installation. Um, just between a dash mount and the angle that we get, uh, it could play up to seven or eight K if you wanted it to. Uh, passenger side, um, just as, as pretty here. Uh, the, the tweeters are, uh, aimed at opposite B pillars. Um, and, uh, the mids are symmetrical as well. Um, but I'm trying to give you guys kind of an overall, I'll have to go to probably wide angle here to give you a perspective on it, but, um, no, it does extremely well. Uh, very much have enjoyed the uh, ever since we swapped the Akitons in January, um, just do things that I wasn't prepared for, um, in a good way. Uh, it's just, it, it shows you anything and everything. Um, but anyways, um, appreciate you guys following along. Um, I have a build blog on DIY mobile audio. That's thousands of posts long. Uh, I also keep a Facebook album current and needs to get updated with the rear fill and front sub as of this time. Um, but want to give you guys kind of a, a more in-depth look, uh, of the system, uh, via video, uh, so you can see some of the, uh, the nuances and, and some of the explanation. Mm -hmm.